Cool. Hello, and it is Atlantic Scrum at Adventures. And Renee, have you have you been with us before? Yeah, I've been. Uh, I joined some someone I think two weeks ago, and I said I would come back if I'm. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Roger Thomas is yes, yes, yeah. great yes, at all. You had a holiday. Great, great time. Mm -hmm. Here we are, and uh, Viv and Sabri and John and myself are here, and um, yeah, let me get the old Firefox tracker malarkey up, and uh, press the screen share button, and then we can get going. Um, okay, so various things are afoot. Uh, should we start with start with um, let's let's do people people focused again, maybe John. How are things with you? Uh, good. Um, I did some tweaks to the interface. Um, I think I'm actually going to use uh, Thomas's idea of implementing a bunch of modals for uh, static content on the site that doesn't need to be search engine optimized, such as okay. the admin pages. We're talking um, about um, we're talking about local support. Sorry, right? local support. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like there's um, all these pages that aren't really important that I could struggle to integrate into the interface. Ah, uh, uh, you're right. We're talking about the new map interface, and yeah, what where would the different you know bits of actually pages. right there? Click new organization, for instance. Yeah. Uh, this could just be a modal. There's because uh, it's sort of hard to fit on the current island that mm. floats in the map. Mm -hmm. It's so long, hmm. but there's no reason for this to be like a search engine optimized page. I could no. just load it in a modal. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, um, your ongoing prototype available at some uh, Heroku location. I need to s download my Heroku tool belt and do that. Oh, okay. uh, the source code is available on my branch, uh, right. on my repo at the branch called Carta. Yeah. Uh, um, in fact, uh, Marcelo would probably appreciate it if you could uh, boot that up and see if you see any pins, because uh, us Ubuntu uh, users have been having no trouble, whereas he's been struggling to see pins when he tries to play with the source code. What you're saying there is that you'd like me to, for example... Oh. Yeah, that works fine for me on uh, Firefox on Windows. Okay. Uh, so you've got a branch, which is your branch at Carter. Yeah. Uh, uh, and if I was to just sort of run this and have a look at it, uh, but um, yeah. Anyway, I, I, I can do that. But it would definitely be. You should definitely, I you know, install <laughs> Heroku Tool Belt and just be, you know, like I, ideally one, you know, throwing that little Heroku instances up there. You know, is something that you want to have. But in particular, when you're doing major interface redesign, you don't mm -hmm. want to discover later in the day that there's some fundamental incompatibility with Heroku. Mm, yeah, I would. Sure. I would say. So I, I think before you do anything else in it, I would. I would get that Heroku thing okay. sorted. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. But uh, that, that certainly sounds like uh, you know the, the, the modal thing makes sense. For these, I mean, one thing. Although with new organization and edit organization, we've been talking about uh, well, uh, the new organization, the how they well, you know, a view of the map for them, you know, make make sense. And you could be, you know, uh, the new organization when you were registering the address, you know, it would come up, and you might actually even be able to. This is like, you know, in, in like ten years time when we really, really, really learn the interface, you know, uh, you could actually drag the uh, map thing around. To, mm. Anyway, anyway, I'm just I'm talking. It's crazy future talks. So Potentially, me. I don't yeah. think there's a lot of value out of like interacting with the map while you're making your organization. Uh, but well, probably probably not not in the new organization page. More likely in the actual. I mean, I think there are situations in which people would like. You know, they happen to put in their their address. You know, or their mm -hmm. address is in there. We've got like multiple addresses. Actually, their the place of business that they do is some is somewhere different from the address, and they want to move it around them. Who knows? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, th I think obviously we want to get the system out there and in in contact with, you know, more mm -hmm. people before, you know, that's we, we've got to work out like real users what they what they, they do rather than what we think would be cool. Um, of course, obviously, what we could think cool is very important. Getting more out of the map. I mean, we might um, someday take advantage of directions by Google Maps. So you know, like on the show page, we could have 
you know, like get directions to this location. And, and you enter your current location, and it shows yeah. you like in real time. Yeah. And then you can choose like public trans routes and stuff right, like right, that. Right. So. Yeah, yeah, there are definitely things that we can put we can put out there to um, the clients uh, to see if they're see if they're interested. I mean, that's all it's all good fun stuff. Cool. So, anyways, it sounds like you're having you're having fun. Is there anything uh, blocking you moving forward in particular? Uh, no, not not in particular. No, and and uh, plans for pairing over the next I don't know cycles. What's what's your? Um... I'll be pairing um, from after this meeting until two p.m. Eastern. So that's uh, six p.m. UTC. And then okay. usually I start back up a couple hours after that. Sure. For another few sessions. Okay, and then you'll you'll be focused on local support, I guess, for those pairing sessions. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, right. Uh, okay. So moving on, I see the um, in my list here. Marion is next in the list. Uh, how are you doing, Marion? I'm good. Um, so yesterday I worked with Marcelo on putting the. Um, Links on the project page. Right, right. On the, this, so this is for GitHub and um, I forgot another thing. Google Tracker. Yeah. Yes. So okay. we're yeah, and then um, so we're just about done with that. We just have one test that shouldn't be failing. Actually, I started to do a pull request and then realized. I, I think I saw it open and close it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Fair enough. Uh, and um, so we'll do a pull request for that. Hopefully. Um, Marcel will be around a little bit later. And then we were thinking um, to work on having a place to actually enter, putting it on the edit page, like okay. on the edit page so that they can enter the URL. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But I should do that in two separate pull requests, right? That's per yeah, perfectly. Well, of course, this is this is Thomas, so so he's a you know if if it was my project. Then, yeah. then uh, I'd be tempted to break it up that way. Yeah, I don't know Thomas's philosophy yet. But I, I, I think he, he's probably he's probably all right with that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get, I, I, I would do do what comes naturally to you, and then, then see how he reacts. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, are, are anything blocking you at all? No. Nope. And uh, you, you're you're planning to I guess carry on working on website one look the next few hours or what's that? Oh uh, yeah. And you know, I, maybe I'll wait for Marcelo, and I'll go start working on local support. Yeah, yeah, sounds uh, all sounds perfectly reasonable. Um, so I'm going to get confused myself with the order, but there were some. I guess I, I want to reward people who who are here earlier. Um, uh, Viv uh, is at the other end of my of my list there. How how are you doing, Viv? Oh, I'm I'm doing okay. I've okay. Um, I've kind of got a list of things. I I I, I kind of sat down, went through. Couple of things. I need a coding project to start work on. Right. Um, so that's one thing. I mm -hmm. know there were a couple of things. I went over um, that ESAS uh, yesterday. Oh yeah. Um, and I thought, I mean, I, I thought it was excellent. I really, I was impressed. I thought it was really great. I love the two layouts. Um, two. Right. One thing I wanted to note: love the layout of the presentations. The one with the um, the um, orange and the blue, just with the white background and the yes. um, AV on the right. You know, I kind of love that layout for PowerPoint for your presentations. Right. I thought that looked really professional. That was one. And then the second item that I I noticed that was very yeah, like that's a nice clean presentation. I like it with the logo it's on the right. Actually, basically, Thomas. It's, it's all Thomas. I, I, oh, I, I, I tried to make it look ugly, but Thomas just stopped me, and he made No, it. no, no. It looks great. Your con th Thomas had the graphical user interface. You had yep. the content. The two of them together worked beautifully. And well, I have to say, the content, actually, the content produced by um, other fantastic people, such as pa Pavel and uh, Marion and Bill. Then, um, okay, then you did nothing. I'm, I'm, <laughs> but it looked great. I'm, I'm the front man. I'm this the vacuous guy who just kind of waves his hands around at the, no. the front. Oh, uh, no. Really, no, it's all about no. it's all about the team. No, actually, not not. Yeah, it's. Um, all three of it, right? Because you had to speak it. I just think the whole thing worked, right? <laughs> I just, I just liked it. It all worked. Oh, well, I'm, very, I'm very, very pleased to hear that. And flattery will get you everywhere. Um, no, I, I think, I think I, I do need to speak, uh, to speak more slowly. Uh, but, but yes, no, no. It, I, that, that, that didn't bother me. English, good. yeah. English, I, but I saw your comment. Another item that I liked was the, um, and I think maybe it was in the Google Docs section. Right. Um, the layouts with that are um, dark gray on top, the tonal, dark gray on top, bottom gray on the bottom. That looks very nice. You know, if you're going to uh, present to a client, I think that's also another look 
that I'm works sure very good. nicely. Do that, you, sounds, do you, that sounds good. I'm not sure what we're talking. You say in the Google Docs. I mean, there. Yeah, is... there was a link for where all the documents were for this um, ESAS course for this yeah for this AV course. You mean the lecture slides? That, that, yeah, that, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what you call. I, I, yeah, I guess that's what they are. There was, but anyway, they had the layouts. They had all the well, most of the slides. I had a link that I I. Um, yeah, I think there uh, also I, there's also like a PDF link or something that Thomas. I guess uh, like she means the folder with the docs, like the Google folder, Google Drive folder. Oh, the Google Drive folder. Yes. Yeah. Right. I don't. Do you use those docs at all? I think they would make really um, very visually um, um, professional, executive-looking presentations for when you for your clients. I'm just I'm just throwing it out. I don't know what you use for your yeah, clients, but I that's just something that looks yeah. really good. Uh, the, 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 I think the thing that we send you that that's kind of like our where we're doing our preparation work for the for the upcoming weeks. Okay. Uh, Alrighty. So that's, um, also, that's also something that we're sharing with the uh, students, particularly at the moment. It, it's it's just um, yeah, the kind of hold, hold, holding like the, the stuff that's going to have to go into the materials uh, in the coming weeks is being prepared there. So. Okay. But yeah. Um, another item after you finish, um, you know, there's that kind of little quiz, mm -hmm. um, which I was going through. The th third question um, was asking um, the, it was asking uh, rather the first one. It was asking whether or not you. Um, had registered for that 169 course. Am I understanding? Huh? Yes, yes, this one, yes. Yeah, and my understanding was that you already needed to have taken the one, not registered, but taken it. You do. Before, right? So, you do. So what was that question for? That was uh, because even if you've completed it previously, which of course everybody should have done, you need to be signed up for the course in order to access the course materials. So when you're, uh, as a TA, in the mm -hmm. coming weeks when the course is live, and you're, you know, offering to help students with their work. Work you, you critically need access to whatever the latest course materials are. So oh, that, that the students have. Okay. Yes. Got it. Yeah, okay. I, was, I, um, I guess like it will be better if you like change it to you need to be signed up for the course in order to work as a TA. That's yeah. That, I mean, I just, I just, I kind of saw it. And I was like, but you, you sh already should have taken it. But I, you know, I clicked it. I just yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. It's a good, it's a good point. We can, uh, I can change that as we. <laughs> Oh, well, not at least not with that link. I can't. But anyway, yes, I can. I can. I can adjust that. It, it certainly uh, led to some degrees of confusion. Well, but anyway, fantastic feedback. Th th thank you. Uh, yes. Yes. Good show. Um, and anything else? So anything else that you're? I mean, you you were saying that you you're looking for uh, a coding. Thing. You're also working on Cordelia. Yeah. Any other any other news from from you? Um. Uh. No. No other news. Oh, I mean this. I just. But you know, you may have already discussed this with Tomas. Yes. But and, and you know this may not be of interest to people right now, but mm -hmm. I'm just thinking in terms of business models, mm -hmm. um, because Tomas had sent me a link, um, um, a give half link from business models, mm -hmm. and I read through your document for the nominate proposal. Oh, that one. And, yes, yes, yes. and um, I also sent another link um, that I think Pete saw um, about a way of bridging the two. So mm. I don't know. Maybe you and Tomas can speak, but I, to me, the nom n nominate proposal mm -hmm. lays a groundwork for a possible um, business model that I think ties in nicely with Give Half, if that makes sense. Right. It, it ties it in nicely. May not. Was it? Yeah, but but I, it, it ties in nicely with what was that? I didn't catch the word. It ties in nicely, it ties with... nicely with Give Half because to me, it looks like you can use that. Um, and I, I don't know what other people think about this. You I haven't really. I want to speak with you and Tomas about it, but. Sure. Yeah, we can get into more. I mean, but you said okay. get half or get. Am I missing the give it's half? It's called give half. I think um, you said dot, dot com. Yeah. Right. I think dot you org or something. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um and yeah. Basically, it's to, to cut to the chase. Bottom line, yeah. it's saying that um, nonprofits should use sort of do double the work and use all of that exposure to gain more customers, and okay. then they can go with the customers wherever they want. And to me. Cool. Given yeah. that um, the proposal you're working on yes. is basically um, you're go having Agile Ventures work as an IT hub, right. like a spoken wheel, mm -hmm. work as an IT hub for um, um, nonprofits in communities, yes. and I'm saying for you to duplicate that. Yes. So you okay? You have this one one community Harrow. Yes, yes. And then you can have another community somewhere else in England, and one in yes. Scandinavia, and oh, one in Spain, etc. Yes, and then just kind of mushroom that way, based on the um, on the business um, guidelines, the business um, uh, organizational structure 
and give and give half. Yes. I'm saying that's a way for you to actually for for it to grow for, sure. for you to brand yourself as a sort of hub and spoke. Yeah, for no, that, that sounds, sounds, sounds good. I mean, that's, that's definitely what we. I mean, I just the, the donut proposal. I pasted the link for uh, everybody in there into the into the chat. Um, yes, absolutely. That's what we would like to see. Is you know, and the, the, like, not not just with the local support, but with other projects as well. But that they can be, you know, the the, the stuff that we create for a, one client can then be reused for multiple clients and, and and so on. So there's clearly a lot. I mean, you know, great input, Viv. Uh, I hate to cut you off there. I'm just thinking about in terms of a scrum. That's it. Yeah, we'll. But it's uh, it, it, it's uh, definitely, yeah. Any specific proposals on how we might change this this thing in order to to get unlock this first chunk of funding would be would be very very welcome indeed. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll circle around on 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 that. Okay, good show. I know that you were also mentioning that you wanted to get you wanted to pick up um, some technical work, and so was that was there a discussion about you doing technical work on Cordelia Lulu or some other? My my brain is sort of flailing there about what you. That, uh, technical... Oh, that's up to Pete and Tomas. I'm, okay. I'm just throwing it out there. No, okay, fair you know, enough. We, we need to get your Postgres set up, Viv, so that you can uh, run the site locally. Yes, I, right. I'm working on that. Yeah. Okay, we'll, okay. We'll, we can pair on that if you like. Good show. All right. Let's just well, let's move along there, just in the opposite direction here, from at least from my perspective, to Sam Pretty. Um, anything going on with you, Sam Pretty? What's 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 big in your world? Um, yes, I was working on website one, uh, on my static pages feature. And oh, yes. I'm about to, about to start the friendly ID for events feature, which I've taken up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, so, uh, so does that mean you've completed the um, uh, the static, the WYSIWYG for static pages? Yeah, like just a, a few, uh, I guess two or three tests remain. More. Okay, and were you able to pair with anybody on that, or you did it completely by yourself? Yeah, I was able to pair on a, a, a on a part of it with Brian. Oh, excellent! And good show. And did you manage to d follow the the approach of extracting the um uh the page um, thing from the document? Yes, like we extracted. Uh, I and Brian extracted the articles class, the documents class, and the page static page class uh -huh. into a separate uh, module, so oh, that okay. we, all of them ha have a like a, a common uh, oh, functionality in the model. Lovely. Sounds excellent. Good, good show. Well, I'm sure we'll look forward to that. Was about website one pull request, and then so yeah. you're right. So you you're you're kind of finishing that up, and um, yeah, of course. Usually we like to hear that the, it's the the tests are there first, and there's a little bit of functionality that remains, rather than hearing there's functionality and there's a little bit of testing uh, remaining. But uh, yeah, uh, I mean, like the specs are, are like there are some view specs and controller specs that are remaining. Sure. Okay. Well, I, I because I'm, like sure. what I usually do is like I implement the feature first, then the functionality. Like the cucumber features, then the functionality, then the specs. Right. Yes. I mean, I think that that, that would. I guess that would be called um, development-driven testing. Is that? Yeah. Uh, we're we're still. I think. I'd, I'd, hopefully, at some point in the future, you and I will get to pair in a way that we can. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the the, the 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 critical thing to be doing is when you're adding those tests is to be removing any functionality. I mean, with the the, fir the first implementation of the feature would be a spike. But ideally, you throw that code away and then have your tests fail. Because the danger is, as we saw in many of the, your local support uh, submissions, is that the tests don't test the right thing. So um, anyway, but uh, very much appreciate you working uh, on that. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go through any uh, issues that come up in, in code review. But uh, yeah, so you've, you've started on friendly IDs for events as well. Um, I will start. Like, I guess tomorrow no, after the, yeah, Like, tomorrow I have my last exam, so. Oh, good, good luck with that. Uh, so, so, but nothing in particular blocking you. And uh, you'll be looking to pair. Um, yeah, like I have a question. Like, uh, like uh, today you had a, a hangout on the ESAS training program. We did. So, like, um, so I wasn't able to attend that. So, like, uh, did you get get along with integra integrating the Stack Exchange, or is it still pending? Uh, it hasn't been integrated yet. We've we've certainly explored a number of options about how that integration will happen. I'm not particularly happy with any of the uh, currently working approaches. I have a meeting with edX. Today in an hour and twenty minutes, uh, and we're going to, you know, be addressing that in, in more detail. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily be planning to run to roll out the um, Stack Exchange integration until this Thursday. In particular, we have this. The, the Stack Exchange is going to be a forum. Uh, I wonder if I could just get, you know, uh, it's. Uh, yeah, here it is. Um, we've got the Stack Exchange thing, which we're all familiar with. Um, we're not going to be able to d delete questions, period. 
So um, um I'm it's possible to delete questions though. I'm sorry. If, yeah, it is possible to delete questions. No, no, uh, the, the, the Stack Exchange people are telling us that in this site, which is especially okay. created beta site for us, we're not going to be able to delete questions, and okay. it's going to, you know, everything is going to be maintained from one edition of the course to the next, which I think is, I think is quite kind of good. What I uh, worry about uh, superficially is if I, if we connect the World TA training course up to this. And then there's a big load of conversations specific to material in the World TA training course. And then at the start of the course, all the students come in from the, you made it, you know. So I'm kind of, what I'm hoping to see if I can do is get Stack Exchange to give us another issue of this that, that's going to be like specific for the World TA training course to train the TAs. Yeah, and one more thing is like, I yeah. guess, uh, I'm not sure about this side, but like if a, if a converse, conversation is kind of off topic, we can flag it and I guess it augment, the moderators can uh, like remove it or something. Well, I'm not I, sure. That, that, so that's that's. I think we can vote it down and do various things with it, and maybe even edit it. But I there's anyway. But this is uh, I say I'll, I'll have a lot more information okay. about this hopefully over the next, next twenty four hours. So. Also, like there was an instant hang hangout button on the uh, a, a course, but it's not there now. Like, did you remove it? No. Well, what I thought that I had done in the so this is the experimental feature course uh, here, and. Um, I had add so one of the things we've been doing earlier today was we've been, we've been uh, experimenting with instant hangouts. I just renamed them help desk hangout and help desk hangout on air. Is what is what I did. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I was like checking the uh, uh, like the ESAS training program course. So yeah, I, 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 I had never I had never added any of those okay, on the ESAS training program. No, I mean that's that's the kind of key thing. Like I'm currently experimenting with the Stack Exchange uh, uh, forum and. Google Instance uh, Instant Hangouts features in the experimental feature pool, so I don't want to like put them into the managing distributed teams thing. Yeah, yeah that's I, okay. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, you know what I mean. I was confused with that, so never mind. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, I'm hoping that all of those things will come into the managing distributed teams and the other uh, course. But yeah, for the for the moment, we're just uh, experimenting. I mean, it was very exciting earlier on. These um, uh, Instant Hangout things, they have once you do it, it updates to tell you how many people are actually in the discussion. Um, as maybe some people saw us talking about on on, on Skype, so um, we couldn't seem to get an on air, on air version of one working, but I'm I'm definitely looking towards having kind of a 24/7 running um, help desk uh, that just be running permanently that people doing the um, one six nine course can come to and you know abuse us or no I mean and ask sensible questions and we can help them with those with those things. Okay, so Sam pretty nothing in particular blocking you and uh, again, so will you be pairing today or, or not until after your exam tomorrow? Um, no, uh, I guess uh, from tomorrow, uh, like uh, I'll be, I'll, uh, I'll start with the Euro Scrum, and I'll, okay. I'll pair after that. All right, good show. Thanks, Rod. Um, going on, uh, Renee, I, I, you, you've, um, I think you just joined, joined once, and you've come back after a, um, uh, uh, a break. Great to have you with us again. Any, any uh, thoughts or questions on what we're doing? Does it make any sense? Um, no, I'm just about um, getting a glimpse on <clears throat> how, how uh, the whole Agile Adventure st uh, stuff is, is working, and yes. um, about, I'm about to you know, check out some, some repositories to clone some and see in what way I can get involved. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and um, you know, so I think we've, we've got the, the, the whole site, you've got the projects. D don't, don't feel that you have to kind of uh, check out repositories and do that independently. Um, one of the you know main sticking points can be trying to get set up with a project and finding you know that you get get stuck with it. We're all about you know if you want to uh, get into a pair hangout session like this one and work with somebody on the install process, then you know uh, just let just let us know. Uh, I think I think you're in the Agile Ventures Skype chat. Is that right? Pardon? Are you in the Agile Ventures Skype chat? Um, um, I used to be, but I think I, I someone. <clears throat> Uh, left it. Yeah, is this you? Yeah. Uh, shall I re-add you so that you can ask us? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Me. Uh, yeah, you, yeah. You can't nice. uh, leave, leave any time. It also, if the if the um, uh, if the um, notifications do become overwhelming, as they sometimes do, you can always do uh, well. I think it's that slash help like that. There is like this alerts on text. If you do alerts on and then your name, then it will only kind of like do uh -huh. stuff. If someone mentions your name, so you can manage the notifications and, and so on. Anyway, but, okay, but, but certainly, for, nice to, to, this is this is always a great first place to ask questions. There's usually someone around there, and if, you know, and if not, they'll be within half an hour or so. Uh, great, well, great to have you back with us, Renee. Um, moving on to, to Pete, how are things with you? 
Things are good. Um, been doing some client work this morning. Um, worked on Cordelia last night a little bit, and got some some new content up on the homepage for that. Right. Still uh, a few things to do. Um, looking to pair with Viv uh, a little bit later mm -hmm. to, to get her development environment set up so that she can make, start making pull requests rather right. than sending me emails with content. Yes. Which, which I'd love as well. Indeed, indeed. So there, that sounds like that's the key next step for you guys. Uh, yes, yes. I mean, I think I think um, Thomas is very excited about about this this moving forward. Are, are we? Uh, do we have it? We have staging and production servers already. It, the, I guess they are. We have, have they, staging, I think. Right. I mean, I, I guess the, I guess the key thing is to move towards actually getting at least something out onto the production. Yeah. Server. Um, I mean, that's the key thing with the the agile is to try and get you know something out and get feedback on feedback on that. So rather than spending too long, put, you know, making successive rounds of changes in development and then only releasing it later when you're perfectly happy with it, it's you know, push it, push. It, I, I would certainly recommend pushing it all the way to a production thing at the moment. You've also, I mean, I guess the plan is to have uh, Codelia.org uh, point to the production instance. Would that would that be how you would? That would be what you'd be planning to do. That is the plan. Yeah. Okay. So because uh, of this at the moment, it's just sort of a placeholder uh, mm -hmm. spike, isn't it? Also, it doesn't seem to. Anyway. Okay. Uh, but nothing blocking you, I guess. Just uh, yeah, you here with Viv, and uh, you need to get that to happen. Okay. Uh, good show. All right. And, and Paul is here. Paul, how are things with you? Good day. Uh, okay. Uh, Hoping to work with Marcelo later and uh, do a little bit on autograders. Mm -hmm. um, trying to integrate, um, you know, uh, Yaros pull request twenty five still. Right. Um, and um, you know, maybe just not uh, not doing something ex quite right. But uh, yeah, we have different versions of uh, uh, dependencies um, like libv8 mm -hmm. and the Ruby Racer. Um, mm -hmm. And I, you know, I don't know if we should try to eliminate that. Um, mm -hmm. One of the, or or just you know, try to isolate it. One of um, the, I think homework four. In fact, uh, if the gem file specifies Rails three point one, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, things like that. Uh, so sure. uh, maybe have a look at that later today. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, maybe I, I mean, I could possibly look at things uh, with you. Briefly after after this thing, great. Uh, it sounds like those things are potentially blocking. Um, and then on auto grader examples, I'm not really sh uh, sure exactly. Uh, you know how much more we can do things. if we want to do some kind of authorization, um, so we yeah. can get a higher rate limit from yeah. the Oct for the Octo Kit API to hit the GitHub. Um, right. Right. So just for people, this, this is um, a crossover thing between auto graders and ESAS training product in that um, we're working on basically kind of a homework that involves just Git practice doing using the Git immersion repository, uh, Git immersion tutorial. Um, and yeah, I, I think yeah, let, let's let's get into that in a maybe auto grader auto grader session immediately after this full. Um, yeah, this issue of um, we've got this issue of, of one that yeah, I guess now we're Checking that people by you know making requests to GitHub, and so you know if we make too many requests to GitHub, um, not just with our testing framework, with the actual framework, then we get might get throttled. Um, so that's potentially a problem. Um, there's a separate issue about validating that the students, um, you know, the, the GitHub username that they're submitting is actually their own username. But that's so unauthorized. Um, um, you get you get uh, 60 requests per hour. Right. Authorized, you get 5,000 requests per hour, and then you can also do some caching. Uh, okay. um, you know, I'm kind of assuming what we would be hitting would mostly be new student stuff, and so it would but not I think be. If you had five, five thousand now, that would probably be sufficient even for the move. That's pretty fast. Yeah. 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 So okay, good, good, good stuff. All right, um, we'll talk about that soon. Marcelo, great to have you with us. Um, how are things with you? Oh, hi Sam. Uh, I was working uh, with uh, Miriam yesterday, and uh, and. Uh, uh, for some feature on uh, website one, mm -hmm. and uh, we submitted a pull request, but uh, Travis just died. So mm -hmm. we're, we're gonna uh, we're gonna clean that up and and submit it uh, 
uh, a new one today. Okay. Look forward to it. And then in the afternoon, probably I'll work with uh, Paul. Mm. And uh, you and Paul are going to get together after the, the scrum briefly? Or? Yes, I think that's uh, okay. before my meeting with edX. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, what, that's what's on my plate. Yeah. Okay. Good show. So um, I guess that, that leaves me. Um, I'm still continuing to be very excited about having got the um, Skype IRC bridge working. Um, yeah. The um, World TA chat is a buzz with people saying things and other things and responding to things and uh, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. And um, so that that's very pleasing. Yeah, as I mentioned already, about I'm trying to work on integrating more instant hangouty things and stacking exchange exchange things into the ESOS distributed teams course. Um, that's the other thing that's going on. Uh, oh yes, in other uh, sort of potentially related news, I did actually download and get. I've got. Um, uh, an edX instance running on my local machine, um, which is kind of strange. Uh, check it out. I've lost it. Where's it gone? I've totally lost it. Oh, no. Uh, oh, here it is. Yes, look. So, basically, I, I followed the instruction. I've been mean, having a discussion with what this uh, Chinese-based runner of one of our uh, Spocks. And um, so, interestingly, it was remarkably easy once I... You know, sometimes you just need someone to say, oh, yeah, it's, it's relatively easy to do. What I did was I followed the instructions here, and I've got the, basically by using the, well, there's a number of methods like hosting on EC2. Just, I've got it now running locally. So I, I already had Vir VirtualBox and Vagrant installed at the appropriate levels. And basically following these commands, all the few errors that occur, I now have a running instance of uh, the entire edX learning management system and queues and everything uh, running yeah. on my laptop, awesome. um, which is kind of interesting. If I can is that find out where it go. Uh, the, I'll put it in, um, where is it? Anyway. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't look particularly interesting. But um, uh, what is it? But the and interesting. What they're doing is that like, rather than port forwarding, this this is the vagrant file that, that they then have, and they've got their their basically their image of this. I guess is a VBox image, and then uh, having brought this this vagrant thing up, um, I can now just run that. Like it's it's given me a local dedicated address, and this look. I've got my own edX instance. Look, look at this. This is my own local edX instance running on my box, on my laptop, um, which is kind of which is kind of interesting. Uh, it, it sort of certainly um, kind of suggests that you know we could. Uh, I mean, <laughs> what one can imagine a sort of crazy thing where Travis was like downloading the entire edX framework in order to help test the auto graders. Um, but uh, the, um, more than that, it suggests I think the whole the simplicity of that vagrant file install. Relatively, I, mean, I left it downloading over lunch, but. Um, uh, I think we really want that for all of our projects. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like for Viv getting set up there with um, uh, Codelia, for people getting set up with local support or website one. If they, if we had some description that was as relatively simple as this to follow and just worked, you know, and that you could be then instead of having to work in a virtual machine or or deal with configuration issues on your OS X or what have you, that you just had you know a terminal that connected you to you know, running VirtualBox, and you can then hit it on a, um, you know, uh, an endpoint like this. That would be ideal, right, for all the projects, would it not? So does that VirtualBox have its own database, or...? Yeah, but, but, but what it is, the VirtualBox there is running complete virtual machine, right? Like an Ubuntu, it's running an Ubuntu machine on my OS X machine, like the VM for the, uh, the main 169 cores, but it's doing it headless, as it were. So it's just running, it, and so it's much lighter weight than the, the um, you know, the, the VM that we're used to, uh, this one. And you can SSH into that and, and execute commands? Yeah, so basically uh, this is, I'm, I'm SSH'd, SSH'd into it here. This is the box that they basically provided the complete framework for, and that's installed. And, you know, it just, it runs without all of this kind of, this dross, do you know what I mean? That you don't really need, and then you can, you, you know, I'm not sure how they've, they've set up for um, editing and so on, but you can expose the files internally in here, so that um, you can use your own text editors or whatever that you would that you've got installed separately on your system. Um, and I think it's it's just we we I, I you know I we have we did have someone set up a local support one for us at one point. It's, I think I think with a bit of focused effort, we could we could be completely vagranted, if you know what I mean. Anyway. So, so that's that's kind of um, an interesting development there. Uh, I, let's just uh, let's try and wrap this up. And it's run a bit long. It's difficult. There's like three people here at the beginning. I think all oh, people focused, and then suddenly there's like twelve people, and then it's oh, okay.
Um, but let's have a look. Is there any other projects that we're overlooking? We've talked about the graders, Cordelia, um, the chat, the textbook, the training course. Funniest thing to do ever is yes, we need chatbots helping us. Doesn't be funny. Um, looks forward or so on. I think we've 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 hit everything. Uh, so is anybody blocked on anything else at all? If not, then that meeting is over. And uh, yeah, I think we've already talked about plans for pairing. So I'll wrap up the broadcast there, and uh, we'll see the uh, old uh, pairing links in Skype. <laughs>